Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday, guys. We have quite a spicy topic today. Please comment below if you cannot hear me at any given point. So we'll check uh, our technology here. So today we have a pretty big topic. A few weeks, uh, I believe a week ago, I published a video about best and worst pay structures. And today I really want to drive it in uh, about my personal opinions. <clears throat> what's happening in the roofing industry, why I believe that split is the worst, but also what is the best. Recently, I visited two companies that have absolutely enormous profits, something I've almost never seen in this industry. One company achieving 28% net profit for roofing industry is unheard of. And another company is also in um, above 20. First, I couldn't believe and when when I um, when I hear stories like this, I don't take it at a, at the face value. I always want to go in. I want to see the books. I want to understand how they do what they do. And in these two cases, I actually talked to the business owners in details, and I understood what's happening. Why they're twenty percent plus net. Just so you know, if you're newer to the channel, maybe a newer business owner in the roofing industry. Uh, average net is anywhere between 7 to 13%. That's average net. Average gross profit, usually about 30 to 40%. And when you hear about companies who are doing almost 30% net profit, that's unheard of. That's a lot of money. If you're making million dollars in sales and you're pocketing clear profit, $300,000, $280,000, if you're doing $10 million, it's $2.8 million. That's insane. Now, uh, so here's the trend. Here's what I've been seeing for the last few years. I see this um, trend with the storm chasing industry where people go on the new markets. They're offering mountains. They're offering a lot. Uh, if you watched our channel last year, video with a two serve contract and here in Minneapolis, we call them out and they're on the blacklist. Very typical storm chasing. Um, Company have been around over 10 years, $12 million a, uh, a year in sales. What they do is they do offer splits. So they offer you all this good commission. So they, they promise you that you're going to make, you know, it's almost, it's always um, earning potential. It's always how much money here, my coffee comes. Thank you, Igor. So it's always this earning potential. It's always your future in your hands. But then at the end of the day, um it's a revolving door nobody gets what they've promised and if you study those businesses something i've been doing for the last couple of years i travel a lot of business i've heard a lot of stories and right now we're actually calling out a lot of companies in the roofing industry for not paying their sales guys their crews and stuff like that so at the end of the day we have two trends trend number one that uh companies who are doing splits who talks about their millions usually don't pay um and screwing their uh sales guys and you have a lot of low suits a lot of nastiness a lot of like bad problems but you also have another trend you have a trend of raising gurus in the space more and more people come on the stage and want to sell you their blueprint for their business i mean to serve contracting just so you understand they have hired probably in my guesstimate in the last three to five years, probably over 50, 60 sales guys. Every year they would go through 10, 12 sales guys. Uh, sales guys would sell anywhere from 800,000 to a million and a half, and nobody is making even 100 grand. Now, on the side note, you have newer way uh, companies who's doing it newer way. Uh, recently, you've seen Eustace Roofing, Monarch Roofing, EIS is coming to this channel. Those companies are not paying pay splits. They're, they're having base salaries. They have employees. They provide them with the trucks, with the, paying all the expenses. And storm chasing industry is absolutely hating on it. And uh, I'm getting a lot of hits too. And comment below if you don't agree. So here's what's happening on the channel recently. People commenting on my video saying there is no way I'm going to work for a company selling three million dollars and doing hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So this is what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to explain why you should not be listening to those gurus on the big stages because even company like I mean look at this look look at uh, what's what happened to 
uh, to serve. Every year they'll hire 10 sales guys and they'll tell them, hey, I'm going to pay you split, right? 50-50 profit, blah, blah, blah. Like this video, uh, guys, by the way, if you like this content, it really helps. Now, those sales guys come in, they hear this promise and they go to work. They go to war for those businesses. They work for a year. They sell a million, million and a half. They get paid sixty, seventy thousand dollars, barely to survive. About ten of them will lose their jobs. Business will pocket all the money. They will find the reason. Trust me when I say they will find the reason to fire you, and 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 I will explain a little bit later why they have to fire you. The business is not profitable. They don't have money. You are the business. If you're the sales rep who works 50-50, you are the business. That business owner probably does not invest in his brand, doesn't invest in his marketing. He relies on you to bring him business. Here's what's happening. He's going to find a reason, going to let you go. He's going to do $12 million a year. Think about how much $12 million a year is. I mean, really think about it. $12 million a year is in 10 years, you're going to be $120 million. And this is what all the fake gurus all the biggest losers on the stage, that's what they talk about. Now, I mean, to serve contracting, uh, people behind that brand, they can go on a main stage and they can preach and teach how they make over $100 million. I mean, Dolmedico claims $170 million uh, in sales. The problem is there are one-star contractors. Hold up. Igor, we blacked out. FTB. <laughs> All right, sorry, something happened. Um, so they, they are one star contractors who failed. They never have employees. They have revolving doors. They have to keep firing, firing people. They've been doing business in very, very unethical way. But the only thing they can focus on, not on the net profit, but on the gross profit, because it sounds good. So the trend right now is not to learn the new way. So the storm chasing guys, and some of them are really good. I, I have a lot of good friends with the storm chasing industry, but storm chasers who do splits, who don't have a brand, I don't get along with them. They usually don't get along with me. I call them out. They fight me. They are the stubborn ones because I'm a numbers guy. If I come to your business, I want to see how you do business. So if you show me that split is good, my question to you, if it's so good, why you don't have a sales guys who work for your business for more than a year? Why every year that bell curve, you, you want me to explain bell curve to you? You suck at business. You suck at retaining your people. Then you have to start over every year and you have to screw a lot of people because you cannot take care of the homeowner. You cannot take care of employees. You cannot take care of your books. You cannot take care of your bills. But the only thing you can do is sell and um, create a Ponzi schemes and lie to people and deceive people that you are this hustler. So you're going to go on a stage and the only number you can talk and throw at me to follow you is the numbers of sales. Listen, guys, it's not what you make. It's what you keep. So my question to you, audience, is do you want to learn from the guys who are really making it and pocketing? I mean, Eric Rina, between us and Eric Rina, who is coming to the conference, I mean, the guy will make $5 million in sales. And I promise you, his profit margin is more than me. Um, uh, 20%. You do the math. You want to learn from Monarch Roofing? Come to Roofing Process Conference. You want to come from Eustace Roofing? 28% profit margins? Come to Roofing Process Conference. You will see how they do it. When I go and study the business, I ask real questions. I break the business down. I look at a three-year trend. I'm tired of bad players in this game who are ruining for everyone. It, it would be okay if fake guru, you know, would go and become one star contractor, screw few people for one or two years and disappear. But I'm not okay with those people going on the stage and teaching others doing the same thing. So to serve contracting, for example, every year they would go from 10, 12 people. Ask yourself, what's happening to those people? Ask yourself, what's happening to 12 sales guys who work for the business for a year? They go on their own. Now they have to learn how to do it a better way. A lot of them can't. So essentially they started doing the same thing. Like it. If you support this video, if you support this message, I need your support too, because it's 
hard to go against the grain. It's not popular opinion, but I'm going to explain now the new way. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for it. I know a lot of people are not ready to hear this message yet, but I guarantee you, I promise you, and you can put my words to the bank. This is the future. 10 years from now, this is how it's going to be. Just bear with me. Let me explain. I'm going to give you two examples first. Um, <clears throat> first example is think about car dealership. So very uh, busy road, you have a big dealership and um, that dealership does not pay their sales guys commissions. They pay them a uh, good salary with some bonuses, uh, but they have lots of traffic. So what's happening is people coming in all day long, tons of you know big crowds coming and buying the cars. So Im imagine if you are the potential buyer walking in and you see this big dealership sales guy comes to you and you ask him a question, um, you know, like, what do you have in the lot? He's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not a sales commission. I'm just showing you the cars. We, we're the biggest one in town. We have 3,000 cars on the lot. Would be unheard of these days. Everybody have a shortage, right? So, and he, he, he doesn't need to sell you a car. He knows he, they're the best, the best option, the best choices, the best pricing. He's not getting paid on commissions. You, as a potential buyer, like everything you see, you don't care how much that guy makes. Completely different conversation. Would you agree? Versus when you go to the dealership and you know three sales guys run and at you because you know they're getting paid on commissions. You know if they don't sell the car, like and as, as a matter of fact, a lot of car dealers they're adopting it to uh, to it too. So what's happening is um, if you build a solid brand, all you need is order takers. That's what Eustace Roofing is doing. They're getting 250, 300 calls a month. I mean, think about it. Their sales guys have six, eight appointments. But it's but now I want you to think about that employee. I want you to think about that person who works for the dealership. He does not have a stress. He goes to a busy place to work. You know, he might have been making fifty thousand a year before. Now uh, this dealership, if he busts his ass, he's probably going to be making you know hundred, hundred and twenty thousand. Not in the commission, just meeting, greeting people, taking orders to. You know, good for the dealership, good for the consumer, good for everyone. Some dealerships have the same problem. They pretty much tell people you sell the car, you sell the car, you have a good paycheck, you don't sell the car, you don't have a paycheck. So I want you to really quickly think about what are we doing to our sales guys? What storm chasing industry have done to the sales guys? I cannot tell you how many people I have met who've been screwed by, screwed by 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars who couldn't pay their bills because companies were ruining them. I mean, if you're the sales guy and you are living on minimum wage, just a few checks here and there. Last year, I interviewed one guy. He was owed over $40,000 by to serve, actually. The only reason he settled for 15 because he didn't have money to pay his bills. We're killing, we're destroying this industry. We're destroying those people. So when I came to Eustace Roofing, and I've seen a few more other companies, you need to understand, yes, it's it's true that some sales guys might sell a couple million dollars, let's say three million dollars. And it's true, let's say they only make 120. For storm chasing industry, it's unheard of. This is the most hate I get these days. Like, oh, I'm not willing to do three million dollars for 120. But let me tell you, let me show you how it's happening. Sales rep at Eustace Roofing comes in. He doesn't have to worry about his gas, his car. He's taken care of. He probably was having $50,000, $60,000 job before. Now he comes in to work for solid brand. He has leads. He has a lot of opportunities. And by the way, I'm not going to explain in this video sales structure of Eustace Monarch and other company today at 1230 at roofing-school.com. I'm going live and I'm actually going to break down exact pay structure, how they're paying. So this is just general video, just calling out the bad practice and highlighting the good. But if you guys want to really learn how they do it, because this is number one question I've been getting the last two weeks. Give me the blueprint. Give me the, I, I can't give you, I'm sorry, on YouTube or Facebook. I have to teach it in school because it's preparatory to those businesses and I'm not going to make them vulnerable. But I will spoil this. So, yes, they're not getting your 
10%. So what they have is they have solid base, let's say five, 600 bucks a week, and then they have bonuses. So they make good money. They make, you know, like $2,000, a week like at monarch roofing sales guys will have two thousand dollars a week but when the monarch roofing sales rep goes and meets homeowner he doesn't have to sell to pay his bills his order taken he works for a massive brand people love that brand and all he does just shows up and by the way monarch he says they can replace those guys they're not relying on them and those guys not gonna leave you know why because they have a good living they don't have a stress it's a stressful stressful life for the sales rep to work for a brand that does not have leads and i know storm chasers absolutely hate me for this message for the last few years um because they've been uh calling me out and they're like well you know if you if you need leads uh you need order takers we hate order takers we need to go getters here's my second um example in today's story in this discussion think about mcdonald's think about fast food industry ask yourself this question why so many people taking low paying jobs for big companies they're low paying jobs wells fargo pays what like 35 45 thousand dollars how many people walk up? smart people educated people because they have a guarantee so your job as a business owner, and this is probably the, the highlight of today's video, your job as a business owner is to create a process where ordinary people can deliver extraordinary results. Storm chasing split business model is the model where you have to rely on extraordinary people and those extraordinary people will take all the risk of not getting paid at the end for very questionable results. Because I'm telling you right now, and this is, you know, I'm gonna hit home with this. I see a lot of people on the stages these days. If you follow those people, like follow them and ask yourself, how did they get on the stage? What their history is? It's revolving door even in their consulting business. It's revolving door even in their guru business. They cannot retain people because it's all about them. It's all about this hustle. It's all about being extraordinary. Guys, if you want to build, you know, Walmart, Chick-fil-A, like you have to build the process and system for simple people not extraordinary people you have to give them a process and people will take it let me tell you this you can take a storm chaser or someone from the even from the industry who have been promised 250,000 a year they the, the the reality is those splits they look good on paper they rarely work in real life business owners usually are not that good who offer that so at the end of the day they have to raise money and they look at those sales guys simply as banks i'm like all right i'm three hundred thousand dollars in the hole what can i do about it well i have five guys and i owe them five hundred thousand dollars i'll settle with them for two hundred thousand dollars and they literally do that they fire everyone and they go and make money and they don't feel bad about it i don't know how you cannot feel bad about it now what you can do you can find not extra or ordinary people find someone who is making fifty thousand dollars a year like for example i remember adam sen worked at menards at the time he was making sixty thousand a year when i hired him gave him a salary of eighty thousand a year today he's running his business you know he got out of behind the counter at five o'clock in the morning guy he's a hustler he's a hard-working guy he had a good job you know twenty thousand dollars went a long way for him we created some bonus structure stuff like that He's in directory now, great guy. I recommend his company. And I, over my period of, you know, in my career, I've recruited five people from Menards. I recruited people from Wells Fargo, from Marriott Hotel. Like everywhere I go, I know how much people make. When you go and take a person who makes 50,000 a year, you can do two things. You can say, hey, you can make as much money as you want, commissions only, because it's good for me, because there's no liability for me and you're gonna become my business, whatever you bring me is good for me, but I can't promise you're gonna pay your bills. 
if you don't sell or you get sick, I can't promise you anything. Or, so let's say you can do 100,000, 10% on a million dollars. I'll tell you this, if you offer person who is not from roofing industry, two structures, one, 10% from the top, let's say for a million dollars, you're gonna make 100,000. Or you offer them a salary, let's say 60,000, based on that they're gonna sell at least million dollars, but if they do, uh, they'll make up to 80. I promise you this, most people will take salary with a smaller, people want stability more than anything. They want the check to be there every Friday. You know, if you have kids, if you have parents to take care of, if you have a family, I understand that some people in this industry, they're extraordinary sales guys and they can sell three, four, five million dollars a year. I get it. You are there. You're there. Go start a business. And, you know, guys like Sam Taggart, they're one of a kind, but you cannot scale that. It's not sustainable. What Sam Taggart does really well is you have to build a system for the sales guys and you have to motivate them and um, you have to become a good leader. So what I see the best of the best in the game doing it now, they're building amazing cultures. They're not paying splits. They're not opening their books. They're paying good salary base. So let's say 600 bucks a week. And after that, they pay them good bonuses. There's plenty incentives to make more money. So you have to pay people enough to stay, but you have to show them reasonable amount, a reasonable pay structure, believable that you will actually uh, make more. Because when I look at split, it's always sound too good to be true. And the, the worst of the worst is when you sell that big jobs, that's the most claims. I mean, and quite a few gurus on the stage, they actually have done it. The moment someone sells lent for them $2 million project, the game is over. They're not paying this guy $150,000 for three days of his time. They just cannot wrap their mind about it. Like you can't make that much. You didn't take all the risk. Yeah, that sales guy did take all the risk and you did promise him. And then they go in front of the judge trying to debate who is right, who is wrong. Guys, I'm telling you, build a brand. This is what Monarch Roofing have done, Eastus Roofing. Build a brand that generates tons of leads, hire few order takers, create good sales structure where your sales guys are taken care of and they don't have to be hungry. They have to sell, they have to come, you know, they will come to work with a smile on their faces. They will sell for you because you provide for them. If you take a person who yesterday were making 50,000 a year and this year he made 100,000 and he knows he can make, let's say up to 250, I promise you this, he will never ever leave you. He's not gonna go to work for someone who will offer him, you know, 50-50 split because it looks good on paper. He will trust you and follow you because you're a good leader, you're good with your customers, you invest in your crews, you invest in your brand, you always have jobs, all he has to do is just stick around and keep taking orders for your company. It's that easy. You take care of your employees. They don't have to be superstars. They have to be trainable and disciplined and follow orders. And there's plenty of people out there. And there's nothing worse than sales guys who simply go in, sell one year, $3 million, become this rock star, and now start demanding from others. It's like, whoop, I'm a $3 million sales guy. I made $300,000 last year. He, well, you did it for one year. Great. Show me three year history. I've seen it too many times. It goes both ways. Sales guys also usually not that good. Yeah, you worked one storm and you sold 100 jobs in three weeks. Good for you. But you also become lazy and you also become drug addict or alcoholic and you start having issues and now you're just broke and you want to repeat it. But guess what? We don't have a storm and you have to bust your ass and you have to work eight to five. Guess what? And you can't do it <laughs> because you don't have a character. You don't have a backbone. That's what's happening. So create a process that even ordinary people can take and build extraordinary jobs for you. And that's how you do 20, 30% net. And the worst of the worst is, uh, th the reason I'm making this video, and you've seen Delmedico even on the picture, because Delmedico claims $179 million. And 
I want to call it out. It's bullshit. You know, when you make that money and I'm besides the Omega, there's a few other gurus. I, I, I'm getting quite a few emails when people I just read through the notes. A couple of weeks ago, I got an email from another guru. He was saying that back in 2015, he was $10 million company and he could not pay $1 million to his ABC supply. And I'm like, what gives? You're making 10 million a year. You cannot pay $1 million. Where's the profits going? Are you even profitable? And you teaching me how to sell, how much to pay? Guys, what's wrong with us? Why are we looking at the flash? Why are we looking at all of this? This is not where the money is. It's not what you, it's not what you take. It's what you keep. Stop looking at the flash and start look. I mean, uh, the Wolf of Wall Street phenomenon, it's a real thing in the roofing industry. Yeah, you can put a suit on. Yeah, you can be the loudest. Yeah, you, 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 you can put up the best show, but behind it, you can be the most broke. Uh, I'm going to go real quick and see who we have in the house today. Uh, Kevin from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, good morning. Shane is always McGuire. Sometimes I wonder if Shane McGuire has actually had a job. He is on every live video morning or night that I have. Shane, absolutely love it. Great example how we don't always agree. I mean, Shane probably argues with me most of the time, but he's always sticking to the content. He's always uh, here. I appreciate you, Shane. Shane is saying 7 10%. Um, by the way, those big companies, um, you know, what if I tell you that you can do, you can build an amazing brand, do 20, 30 million dollars a year, and your sales commission cost can only be at 5%. Now, you can also keep sales guys happy, busy, uh, grateful for the job. Because this is the difference. When you work, you probably, I mean, if you're a storm chaser, listen to me, you probably have never worked for a solid retail company. Let me tell you how solid retail company, uh, uh, you know, operates. You all, your phone is always ringing. People always want to do business with you. You always have tons of referrals because you have invested in your business. That's what the best of the best are doing. People know you feel like a rock star. You go to the point, at that point, you don't care if you're getting 5% or 10 or 15%. You are taking that order. It's completely different um, um, chemistry, if you will. Buoy a baby to that. You will never, Delmedic can never experience that. When you're a one-star contractor, you have to sell, like you cannot leave the house before you sell because you have one-star reviews on BBB, you don't have a cruise, you sub out everything. You just, I'm sorry, you're the biggest loser in the game. So the only thing you have is just put up the best show and hope they're not gonna research what you actually all about. I'm just saying. So. Uh, Jonathan Bro said, let's go, let's go. We've been going. Robert Patrick, 20, 28% net profit. Let's see where this is going. Um, Daniel, I actually, I saw you comment the other day. I would love to talk to you uh, at one point. Um, Lawrence says, great topic. Good to see you. Lawrence, uh, Jonathan says, did the owners pay themselves salary before fi figuring the net profit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, did they screw the sales reps? Yes, they do uh, screw other. Great cover for Thank you, Nathan. Uh, how many shirts did Jordan send you? I think he worn one every day for the last week. Well, um, Jordan sent me one shirt. He is just uh, the biggest. Um, hold on. Uh, he, he is um, the biggest uh, copycat in the industry. So he took my favorite brand, Noble, and he branded, I'm just kidding, messing with the Jordan. But uh, if you guys want me to rock your short, large size for me, make sure it fits. If it doesn't fit like this, it has to be sporty. Uh, it cannot be like baggy. I don't do baggy shirts. Uh, it has to be a light material. So I'm a little bit picky at what I wear, but something like this would do. So send me a shirt and I'll rock it on one of our lives. Uh, a lot of smoke in the mirrors on stages. Yes, sir. Richard says, good morning. Good morning, Richard. Oh, Richard, we're doing some stuff with the Richard, guys. You're going to see uh, We recently visited Richard Turner um, in North Carolina, and <clears> he <throat> those Carolina airports. It took me like seven hours to get home the other day. But we're doing some great stuff. Uh, watch out for our good content. 
Colin says, good morning, good morning. Uh, Filiberto. All right, guys, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, I'll answer. If not, um, 12.30 today, go live in roofing school. I apologize. I know you guys want answers. I will not share them. I cannot go on air and share what Eastus Roofing, Monarch Roofing, or anybody else is doing. But I have the information. I studied the business. The numbers are legit. Last thing I want is to teach someone without proof, without documentation. So uh, if I see something that's hard to believe, I'm going to go in details. As a matter of fact, 7 o'clock today, mo uh, this morning, I actually was on a call with Jason Eustace, owner of Eustace Roofing, because I'm like, you know, I'm going to teach this lesson. I don't want to mislead people. I want to be the best teacher in a space. Jason, I have questions. How do you do this? How do you do this? So today is your opportunity how to build a sales structure to be 28% net profit in this business. I know a lot of you guys are listening, watching this, and you're like, this is impossible. My uh, gross profit margin is 28 Listen, if you're going to do storm chasing model, you should expect 28 to 38 gross. But if you're doing it the Monarch roofing or Eustace roofing way, you can expect as an end goal to be 28, 30%. It's doable. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not going to be one of those blueprints. It'll probably take a couple of years, but I'll show you how others done it, what they do different, why it works. Today, 1230 inside roofing-school.com. I'm going to put it here. I think you can join for like 97 or 197 per month. And I mean, this one topic alone, it can change your life. I mean, we have a lot of content. We start doing live videos and you need to understand YouTube and Facebook. It's all good. But when I teach people, I want to make sure I protect those businesses. I help them. And we here, here's another cool thing. We have created very unique community at Roofing Insights, something that I did not see exist five, even seven years ago. And what's happening is when we go to these businesses, sometimes I ask myself, why do they um, retail 26% caliber? Why do they open doors to us? Well, I'll tell you why. Because when one company does it and you learn from them, you want to pay it forward. Um, last week we were at, uh, in Pittsburgh, EIS roofing. We walk in and I see this whiteboard. On whiteboard, I see something very similar. I just filmed the video with ACME two weeks ago in Michigan, and I see that EIS roofing, $9 million company from Pittsburgh, literally just learned something from $3 million company in Michigan. They love the video. They love uh, the lesson was in roofing school. So EIS Roofing is open and mining company. Their profit margin, by the way, is over 20% as well. And when you see things like this, you understand why. So I'm walking in. I'm like, that looks familiar. And he goes like, yep, my production manager watched that video. Absolutely fell in love with the idea. Went on Amazon, bought a whole bunch of stickers. We're implementing it. And I see it all the time. Uh, later that day, we went to Ugly Roof, Jonathan Bros, and I see their sales goals for the year. They're also a $9 million company uh, in Pittsburgh. And I look at that, and I'm like, can we film it? They're like, absolutely. So they're showing us how they do business. They open their doors. They look at the numbers. They look at the apps. And I'm standing there and asking, listen, when I started this business in 2013, I did not have one company that would open doors to me. <clears throat> Like I asked questions, everybody was so secretive. I had to figure out myself, QuickBooks, CRM. I mean, I'm a quick learner. I can figure out, I can reverse engineer, but it's hard. I mean, I would die for this opportunity to go to, to $30 million business and to see how they're doing shit. This is just unheard of. So w when I build my business and I got it, and by the way, I invited over 500 people to my business uh, as of two years ago. So I was doing classes literally, come to me. Like, you, you know, you wanna start a business? I'll show you how. And today, guys, you can pay a couple hundred bucks. I mean, people pay $100,000 for a degree they will never use. You can literally go, if you're in the construction and the roofing industry, you can pay $300 for roofing school for one month and you can go in and see 25 companies who are doing 
I don't know, five, 10, 20, $30 million in sales, how they do stuff. And if you cannot learn from that, I can't help you. This is how I learn. I learn on YouTube. If, if <laughs> I don't read anymore. I don't read. And, like if I want to fix my fridge, if I want to figure out how to get my uh, <laughs> green, uh, greener, sorry, <laughs> stumbling with the words here, green, greener, I'm going to go on YouTube and I want to watch a couple tutorials. This is what I want to do for you. But you need to understand that I can't put all the information on YouTube because you still, while those companies opening doors and willing to teach, you know, they also ask, where is it going to be? So people share more if it goes to private um, portal like roofing school, but they're not going to probably be as open is it for YouTube because they have a competition. Um, they have homeowners who's watching them. So that's why I can't teach you here, but I promise you, you will not regret if you come to roofing school and if you join me at 1230 for the same topic, but way, way deeper. So I'm going to answer a few more questions here. So Caleb says 20% net. I guess it's your uh, Caleb uh, profit margins. Would like to know how you're getting there. Uh, love it. Um, blessings dimitri thank you sir appreciate it no way with the salaried sales guys yes way yes way and shane i'm gonna call you out again <laughs> stop saying no way it is possible people are doing it um and i'm gonna share one more thing why it's happening and what's the real future why i believe this is a future guys up here in chicago says from 30 50 uh, profit on the jobs as a sales rep, I get 10% receiving no supplement money. What they're referring is gross. I'm talking about net, huge difference. Here's why this is future. I don't know if you guys are missing it or not paying attention. Government does not want 1099 appointments. Look what's happening in Florida right now. Uh, I actually agree with the 1099 being uh, not a bad idea per se. I know it's a capitalist country and stuff like that. And I know government always wants to. I'm not a fan of bigger government. Don't get me wrong. But you have to pay attention. Government wants you to do business a certain way. It's just a matter of time when it's going to be the way of the land. So right now, a lot of uh, companies are employing sales guys the way they should not be employing they, they're not employing them they're not creating real jobs they're they're just they're doing it the wrong way the right way is to like first of all you want to control your process i mean yes i get it that middleman kind of business is profitable but if you want to be like 2021 should should really teach you one lesson the more you control of actual production the more goods that you can actually produce the better you are on the marketplace. Like if you have a warehouse with a whole bunch of ply with the nails and everything else, you're golden today. And if you're just paper mover, you're screwed. So manufacturers who actually, you know, make something with their hands, who have actual employees, those are who's doing really well. And if you're just moving stuff that someone else is making, you're going to be out of supply. You know, like I, I was trying to buy a car other day and I called the sales guys, hey, you know, I'm trying to buy a 2021 CN and hey, two months out. Because nobody even tried to convince me. Nobody was taking my number, say, I'll call you back. They don't have a cars. They don't have a cars. When you make something, when you make a product, when you have roofers as employees, when you have sales guys as employees, you control your process. When you have marketers as employees, when you don't have anything, no wonder. I mean, at the end of the day, guys like Delmedica, few other famous storm chasers, their profit margins probably five to ten percent. That's the real reason why they, they never ever talk about it. Delmedica, I've heard it many times say, hey, I made $179 million in my career. My real question: how many guys who worked for you made over 100 k How many guys did you have working for you who you screwed? How many guys you didn't pay for? big commercial jobs, small commercial jobs, because, you know, I know the reputation. I know the number is overwhelming. So you can teach all you want, but the, and the reality is if you're 5% net guy, say, hey, I've done $100 million at 5% net, but I'll follow guys like Eric Reno, who will do 
25% net on $5 million. For me, it's way more attractive. Who has great reputation, who, you know, or guys like Rodney Webb, who makes real millionaires. You want to follow someone? Follow someone who makes other people rich, not themselves rich. Not a money grabbers, not a selfish me, me, me. It's all about me. You know why we have this problem? You know why we even have this discussion? Because um, companies like to serve, they're selfish. They don't give a crap about homeowner. They don't give a crap about those sales guys. They're going to lie to you. They're going to misguide you. They're going to use you to get what they want. If you're in business, give people what they want. You will be surprised how many sales guys don't need high, high uh, profit. Uh, like they, People don't necessarily need higher percentage. They need a steady paycheck. That's why so many people, if you think about the work for big corporations, because it's a safe net. Yeah, it's eight to five. It's boring, but it's guaranteed $50,000. I guarantee you, if you guarantee sales guy, let's say 60, 75, $80,000, it sounds maybe not as good as making $200,000. But if you look at the actual numbers, how many people actually made the 200,000, it's a few and far between. And it's not repeatable. It's not scalable. It's not even every year. So just because you have one great year doesn't mean that you're going to have next year. So I know Delmatic is teaching this bell curve. Well, I don't think it should exist. I don't think you should go like this every year. I think you should go from here to here all your life. You know, every year, 20% more, 20% more, 20% more. Instead of doing this every year, up and down, up and down. Hire 10 sales guys, fire 10 sales guys. Ruining your life, bringing so much stress that nobody needs for your life and ruining everybody else around you because it's not sustainable. It's not scalable. It's just bad business practice and numbers show it. Look amount of bankruptcies that comes out of companies who are doing split profits. If it works so well, why is everybody's quitting? Why everybody's filing bankruptcy? Why nobody can uh, to pay ABC bills? That's the real question. Uh, Justin says, I hope your class explains what successful businesses with this space structure expect from their salesmen. Absolutely. I will tell you not only what they expect, I tell you what they get because I actually talked to the sales guys. Uh, I met and, you know, like spent time with them. I know exactly what's happening with them. Uh, not one business structure is the same just because your sub doesn't make you greedy. Some contractors pay their subs 25% more than the rest. Absolutely. And every business is different. Like this might not work for you, but I want you to show, I want to show you guys the other way. You know, I'm tired of this noise. Um, I'm tired of to listen to the loudest voices. I might be the quietest. I might be not most popular. You can hate me. You can call me out, but I'm going to show you the way. And because the way is real, it's there. Those guys are quiet. They don't make a lot of noise, but they're true winners. They have a track record to show for it. You know, when you listen, here's who you're going to be learning today at 1230. You're going to be learning from company who spends $150,000 a week in the payroll expenses. Let that sink in. $150,000 per week in the payroll expenses. You want to see how they do it? Come today, 1230 to roofing school. Um, it's not too late to sign up for the school. Go to roofing-school.com. Um, sign up. I mean, here's how school works. You go, you sign up, you pick level, uh, you pick um, the plan. You can try it for one month. No question asked. You can cancel later. Anybody can cancel, uh, you know. Um, everything, all the information about all the offers, it's on roofingschool.com. All right, guys, um, I'm done here today. I'll see you if you're in a school at 1230. It's going to be big Zoom. Hopefully, we're not going to have any difficulties. It's a little bit harder than to go uh, live on YouTube or Facebook last time. We have audio issues. I think we figured it all out 1230 today. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for coming. And uh, we are done. My friend, can you help me?